In this tutorial, we'll be creating realistic looking starburst effects from scratch and learning some cool Photoshop tricks along the way. Hi there, Michael Wojcinovich here with another Photoshop tutorial and today we're going to be looking at how to create a realistic looking starburst effect like this one and placing it inside your image. Now we're going to be creating these from scratch and I've seen a couple of tutorials out there that um, take sort of a shortcut approach to creating them and the problem with those tutorials is that they end up with a result that doesn't look like a realistic looking starburst effect at all and so pretty much anybody that knows anything about Photoshop will be able to tell that you actually um, you know, fake that effect. So what we're going to try and do is, is make something that actually does look quite realistic. So we're going to actually come back to this image that I shot here a little while back and we're going to uh, figure out how to place this um, into our photo a little bit later. But we're going to start off by creating something that looks like this or like this one here. And um, the goal is not just to actually create the image but also learn some of the steps along the way that you can uh, use whenever creating, um, you know, brushes, custom brushes, and, uh, and just these sort of effects in general. So the good thing is that I will be providing you with both of these uh, two starbursts here so you can actually just download them uh, in my blog where this video is embedded. Uh, if you're watching this inside of YouTube, uh, you can just see the link to that blog post right below. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create a new image. We're going to go ahead and create a fairly large resolution image, so about 2400 by 2400 pixels and make sure that 16-bit color is selected. Next thing we're going to do, just make sure that uh, black is selected as your foreground color, and we're going to hit Option Delete to fill our background with black. And we're going to just duplicate this layer one more time, hitting Command J. Now we're going to go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare, and just make sure that your lens flare is positioned in sort of this manner where these three flare elements are separated from one another. Select the 35 millimeter prime option at about 95% brightness. Next thing we want to do is just isolate this little bit in the middle here. So we're going to use the elliptical marquee tool and we're going to select more or less the middle point here. So as we start dragging this out, uh, we see that, uh, and you probably have experienced this yourself, that the marquee tool is just useless for creating circles um, if you don't know the shortcuts. So one great shortcut is to hold down the option key, which will actually create the circle from your center point, and the next great uh, thing to do is to hold down shift, which will constrain it to a circle. So now we're going to sort of scale this up to a point where we're happy, maybe somewhere around there, and we're going to go to select, refine edge, and find a feather that uh, that works well for us. So I would say that in and around uh, 10 pixels here uh, should work pretty nicely. Now, I think that 10 pixels, that does include the 30 pixels that I had originally here around my feather radius. So um, if you don't start with any sort of feathering in your marquee tool, you'll have to do a 40 pixel um, feather on the refine edge tool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just extract out this little bit here. So Command J will pull that out for us and we're left with essentially just this circle. And the next thing we're going to do is move that over. So we're going to use our move tool and position it more or less in the center of our frame. Now we can pretty much get rid of this uh, layer that we created here before. And the next thing we're going to do is to transform this so that we essentially create what is going to be the basis of our starburst, which is these, these little thin lines over here. So going back, we're going to hit Command T. We're going to start scaling this down. Oh, wrong layer. Command T on the correct layer is a good starting point. So we're going to make sure that your actual uh, flare layer is selected. Then hit Command T and then we're going to shrink this down. Now hold Option once again so that it goes from the center point. And we're just going to flatten that down to around there. And once again holding Option, we're going to stretch outwards to and around that point there and just kind of nudge it so that it's centered within our frame. And I'm actually going to transform the vertical so that it's a little bit thinner. So Command T once again against our center point and we just want it to be a thin little sliver. That looks about right. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Filter and we're going to Blur this. Going down to Blur, Motion Blur, make sure that you have your angle set to zero and your distance is going to be anywhere between 
uh, 150 and 200 pixels if you're operating at the same resolution that I'm at. So clicking OK, that will just kind of smooth that whole thing out for us and get rid of any sort of uh, pixelation that was created from our transform tool. And essentially what we're going to do now is we're going to keep um, duplicating this and spinning it around until we get to this sort of final endpoint. So going back in here, we're going to actually, I'm going to duplicate this background layer one more time. So select it, hit Command J, and I'm going to merge this layer down. So now we've got it on black. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command U, and I'm just going to change the color of it so that it's a little bit more on the orange, you know, yellow side of things, and nudge our saturation over a little bit as well. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this once more, and we're going to change our blend mode to screen. Now we're going to just zoom out a bit, hit Command T, and we're going to spin this around. So we don't want to necessarily um, create a perfect, um, you know, centering around it. We want to maybe just kind of uh, nudge it so that it's um, at a slight angle. We don't want it looking too, too perfect. And I'm just going to adjust this so that it looks like it's, you know, a little bit better centered within our frame. And we could have used guides here, but, you know, we don't really need to make it perfect. Uh, a little bit of asymmetry actually just makes it look a little bit more realistic. So now we've got this little X here, and that's really going to be the foundation of our um, of our starburst. So next thing I'm going to do is create a stamp visible layer. So I'm going to do that by hitting Command Option Shift E, and we're going to change that blend mode to screen once again. And again, we're going to hit Command T, and we're going to start rotating around. So I'm going to rotate it so that we have this sort of general shape. And now we're going to modify the scale of it a little bit as well. So hitting um, taking our corner point and we're going to hold option to once again constrain our uh, our scaling and it's up to you how you want to shape this I mean we can create a shape like this we can stretch it outwards it really doesn't matter um, we want to go a little bit asymmetric here so I'm probably going to do something like that and just make sure that things are still centered and next thing I want to do is I'm going to select the warp tool and the warp tool is just going to help us to further um, kind of bend this so that it doesn't look even so I'm just going to bend these two corners, oh, not there. Just make sure you work with the corner edges, otherwise you'll end up distorting the center a little too much. And maybe with this guy, we will take this in. And we'll just kind of nudge that back so that it's centered. Okay, so now we see we're, all we're really doing there is just making sure that it doesn't look too, too perfect. Now we are going to essentially duplicate this layer one more time. So Command J will duplicate that for us. We'll hold down, make sure the screen is our blend mode, which it is. And again, we're going to hit Command T and we're going to rotate this around and I'm going to flatten it a bit as well. So we're zooming out here and shrinking things down. Maybe flip that around so that it's looking like that. There we go. All right, so positioning that, that's starting to come together quite nicely. Now, we want to actually make sure that this is actually a stamp visible layer. So I'm going to go back to our uh, layer just below this one here, hit Command Option Shift E again, just so that we can duplicate this whole um, double sort of X type of thing here. Move that up to the top and select Screen as our blend mode and we're just going to rotate this around. So again, we're going to have our top layer selected, holding down Command T, and rotating once more. Again, we're going to probably scale this down so that it's not too even. So pretty much whatever looks good. And again, just position it so that we're along the center here. Okay. So there we go, we've actually got the foundation of what our Starburst is essentially going to be. Now we just have to make a few changes to it. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command L and modify the brightness of that layer. So we can either make it much brighter or we can make it um, lighter. It really doesn't matter. Darker, I should say. Um, in this case, let's make that one darker and let's make the one that's below that brighter. So we're just going to select the next layer, Command L, and we're going to just brighten that particular one there. Once again, we're just trying to break up some of the evenness here and make it look like it is a little bit different. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new layer on top of that. 
So we're going to take our layer and fill it with black. So Option Delete to fill with foreground color. We're going to go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare. And we're just going to make sure that our lens flare is positioned in the center like it is here. So just basically move everything so that the point is right in the middle of the image. Brightness is going to be 95% and lens type will select 50 to 300 millimeter zoom. Click OK. And we're just going to hit Command U to adjust the color of this a little bit. So maybe I'm just going to take it more towards the yellow side here. We're maybe going to just saturate it a tiny bit more. And next thing I'm going to do is uh, get rid of this outer ring here because all I want is just this centerpiece. So we're going to take our elliptical marquee tool, selecting once again from more or less the center point here, holding down Option and Shift. We're going to just go outwards, 30 pixel feather. Let's just go to Refine Edge uh, to see if that looks good. And I think it does. So we're going to click OK and Command J to separate that out on its own layer. We're going to change this layer's blend mode to screen, not color dodge, screen. There we go. And we're just going to delete the layer below it. Yes. Okay. So now we're going to take our move tool and we're just going to move this layer here so that it is again just kind of centered along our starburst. Now, next thing I want to do is just blur this out a little bit because I think um, those rings are maybe a little bit too clean. So we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're going to apply maybe a um, five pixel blur there. Next thing, we're going to go to filter, blur, and radial blur. Make sure that zoom is selected, uh, that your center point is well, aligned in the center here. And we're going to take the amount up to about 68, 70 or so. Click OK. And that's looking pretty good, I think. So we're going to hit Command Option Shift E to create a stamp visible layer of that, and we're going to hit Command J to duplicate that. So now we've got two copies of the same thing, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, and I'm going to use the Unsharp Mask tool, which you'll see what we'll do is I'll actually take these lines that are intersecting and kind of just smooth them all out so that we essentially have like kind of a, a larger starting point. We don't see those lines crossing one another. So to get that effect, you really have to play with the radius. If we keep the radius small, you see that we're just kind of sharpening, but if we go to a really high point in the radius, like around you know, 350, 370 or so, then it all starts to kind of mesh together here. So I think that in, in this case, about 340 is a good amount. And uh, the, the percentage amount is gonna be about 55. So click OK. And all we really want from this is this center bit here. I don't wanna take the whole thing. So again, we're gonna take the elliptical marquee tool, starting from our center point. Hold Option, Shift, and we're going to take probably around that much there. Then we're going to go to uh, Select, Refine Edge. There we go. And we're going to adjust the feather here so that we're probably in and around uh, 50 or so pixels on top of the 30 pixel feather that we had within the Marquee tool. And we're just going to duplicate. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to duplicate. I'm going to use a layer mask here to just hide the rest of that. So as you can see here, all we've done is just kind of made that center a little bit brighter and made sure that they kind of fuse together a little bit better. So one final time, we're going to hit Command Option Shift E. I'm going to apply a slight blur to that again. So filter, blur, and radial blur. We're going to go out probably about um, 30. And that just kind of softens the whole thing for us. And now we're ready to apply that to our image. So going into our other tab here, this is sort of the image we're going to drop our starburst into. And if we zoom in, we see that we're starting to get that starburst pattern in there. But obviously, the whole point of creating the starburst was to make it a lot more pronounced. So we're going to take our starburst here. We're going to make sure our move tool is selected. And we're going to just drag it up into our tab and drop it down. Just say yes if you get that message. Change your blend mode to screen again. And we're probably going to want to resize this because obviously it's not looking uh, terribly realistic right now. So Command T, we're going to drag down, holding down Option to sort of resize against the center point. And we're going to shrink that down uh, until we're happy. So I'm going to flatten a little bit as well. And then we'll just take the whole thing and just position it right on top of our sun there. Hitting Enter, I think right now it's also looking a little bit too sharp. So we're going to blur this a tiny bit. So we're just going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And uh, make sure your radius is at about 1.7 pixels or so. Click OK. Then we're going to Filter, Blur with a Radial Blur. So again, make sure that Zoom is selected with the amount being around 1820 or so. 
clicking OK there. And finally, we are going to hit Command U. We're going to hit Colorize. We're going to drag it slightly over to this side here, and we're going to add some saturation until it just matches the color of our overall scene. OK. And I'll probably take down the opacity of that to around 89, 90% or so. And I think that is looking pretty good. Now, one thing you may want to do, depending on the situation, you may want to mask out a little bit of the top or a little bit of the bottom, just to, again, break up some of the evenness here and make it look even more realistic. But that's pretty easy to do, so I'm not going to bother covering that today. Well, I hope you found that useful. Essentially, we took what is the Lens Flare tool and we made a bunch of transformations to it to create our starburst pattern in the end. Now, we put up uh, new videos about two or three times a month, so don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and or like us on Facebook just to make sure that you don't miss any of them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.